on the Hawkeye Sports Network from Learfield. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy, proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Big Ten Conference. Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Shields, we're right there with you in Des Moines, Sioux City, Iowa City, and Cedar Falls. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Iowa Hawkeye baseball, selected by Big Ten coaches as the favorite to win the conference title this spring, is spending the weekend in Oxford, Mississippi, facing the Southeastern Conference Rebels. Coach Rick Heller in his 11th year with the Reigns guided the Hawkeyes to a school record 44 victories last season. Iowa is 4-4 four and four after a couple of competitive tournaments in South Carolina and Florida. Rick Heller visits with us on this week's Fight for Iowa podcast in just a minute. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. When it comes to your health, you need the full picture. That means the right diagnosis and the right treatment right from the start. I'm Aaron Bowes, pediatric neurologist with University of Iowa Healthcare. Here, we're working together every day to advance medicine so you can get the best care. With more research, more clinical trials, and more treatment options than anywhere else in the state, the University of Iowa Healthcare is changing medicine and changing lives. Learn more at uihc.org. Bananas are only 39 cents a pound at High V. That's not a sale price. That's the price with the High V Perks membership. And 39 cents a pound is not just the price today or this week, it's the Perks price every day. With the High V Perks membership, you can save on hundreds of products store wide every time you shop and count on Perks prices to stay the same. So if you want to pay less for bananas every day, sign up for High V Perks. It's free and easy. Some restrictions apply. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. To anyone passing through our state, fields and fields of corn might be what they see. But the people who call Iowa home know it's so much more. Corn is ethanol, a homegrown, renewable fuel. Corn is delicious pork, beef, poultry, and dairy. Corn is in 4,000 products we rely on every day. So yeah, our highway views are full of corn. And we're proud of it because corn grows Iowa. Show your support for Iowa corn farmers at iowacorn.org backslash fan of corn. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. With preseason first-team All-American pitcher Brody Breck leading an outstanding starting rotation, including Marcus Morgan and Cade Obermuller, Iowa Hawkeye baseball is expecting big things this spring and summer. Run-producing power will fall to all Big Ten pick Sam Peterson, with Raider Tello, Ben Wilmus, Kyle Huckstorp and Blake Guerin in support. A good measuring stick is this weekend with the Hawkeyes playing at Mississippi. The Rebels are a couple years removed from a national championship. Coach Rick Heller has guided Iowa to three NCAA regionals and its first ever Big Ten tournament title in 2017. The Hawks have averaged 32 wins a season under Heller. In the first couple weeks of the calendar, Iowa has run a gauntlet of tradition-rich programs, including Virginia, Wichita State, Auburn, and Jacksonville. Brody Breck and the starting pitching have been dominant. Middle relief has faltered, but Heller points to competition, especially this early. The tournament in Florida was scheduled mindful of the immediate future. Great, great tournament, regional-type atmosphere, and that's why we got in it. Uh, it's a good challenge, uh, and to your point, um, Man, I mean, we played really well in a lot of in a lot of ways. I mean, offensively, we jumped out uh, in all three games, um, had at least a five run lead in in all three, uh, heading into the sixth inning. Um, starting pitching from Marcus Morgan against Auburn, or excuse me, from Brody Breck against Auburn was outstanding. Uh, Brody was even better than he was in Week One, and uh, you know was dominant. 
then boom, the bullpen comes in and, and it, it, it imploded, unfortunately. And we end up uh, blowing that lead and, and losing the game. Um, and then the same thing happened against Virginia. We get, we score five or six in the first inning and, and here we go, you know, and yeah, hoping Marcus would, Marcus Morgan would go out and pitch like he did in week one. And he, he, he had a rough start, um, struggled with command, had to leave the game in the, the fourth inning. And, uh, you know, Anthony Watts came in in a, in a messy situation, gave up a couple of runs, but then settled in and, and, and pitched well. And uh, unfortunately, we ended up blowing the lead late again out of the bullpen. And and then the same story on uh, on Sunday. You know, we jumped out to a to a good lead and um, bullpen couldn't hold it. Um, and those are those are tough losses, as you know. And it's something mm-hmm. it's something that um, our program the last four or five six years. We haven't we haven't blown many of those. Um, you know, we did th- blew three after the sixth inning in one weekend, um, and I would tell you we probably hadn't done that in three years. Yesterday we we went out and played uh, Northern Illinois at home and bumped the game up to take advantage of the warm weather we were having and and ended up playing four innings in that wind and cold that we were experiencing. But we 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 got a win and we got a lot of guys, a lot of pitchers out there. Uh, and that's what it's going to take. They're all capable. Mm-hmm. Any any team is a new team. I mean, even though you have several returners back, and I'm sure you've heard Kirk and and Fran, uh, you know, talk about it. No matter what the expectations, and no matter who you have out there, every team is, is a new team. And, and regardless of how well things have gone in your training leading up to the season, that team has to learn how to win together, and that team has to learn. Um, that this role is going to be really important and I might have to play this role that maybe I didn't think I was going to play. Um, and in baseball, you know, we don't get spring training games. And so everyone counts. And unfortunately, sure. um, you're, you're trying to put the pieces together in the bullpen that you feel like based on training to that point is right. Uh, but sometimes it takes a, a while to sort it out. And, and that was the message this week is that, hey, we're fine. We're OK. We're playing really good baseball uh, in a lot of ways. And with Brody Brecht at the at the front of that rotation, uh, you've got a, a wonderful ace. Uh, yeah. You mentioned Morgan uh, and others. Uh, Cade, uh, uh, talk about uh, focus on Brody, if, if you would, for a minute. Uh, uh, now that he's solely in, in a baseball uh, frame of mind, uh, a tremendous football player, but but he saw the light. He's he's with you twenty four seven now. Where has his development improved uh, by leaps and bounds? What are you most impressed with uh, in terms of his work ethic and his uh, his uh, technical skills? Well, um, yeah, I mean his work ethic is off the charts. It's it, he's the guy you have to slow down. Uh, I mean he's <laughs> he's the the guy that that is always looking for for more to do, and sometimes as a pitcher, uh, less is more and. Uh, not not overdoing it and putting yourself in a spot where you're you're, you're risking an injury and so that was uh, uh, we had to deal with that a lot the first year and the second year mm-hmm. uh, we didn't have him you know we didn't have him in the fall and the off season and um, the next thing is uh, how much of a competitor he is I mean he is an elite level uh, competitor and then channeling his football energy and adrenaline into a baseball mode where you're controlled and focused on the next pitch and being in control with your breathing and uh, being able to repeat over and over and over. Um, that was uh, a lot of the challenges that we faced those first two years when we didn't have him prior to the start of the season. And then, you know, ultimately, and, and we've talked about this before, I mean, he was dinged up, um, you know, hamstring, thumb, whatever it might be. But he always came into our season not 100% yet. And so you basically have seen Brody limp through two seasons with just toughness and grit and competitiveness and the ability to really focus on improvement and, uh, you know, pitches and feel stuff and all those things that go with pitching didn't have a chance to do it. So um, this fall was was big for Brody and his development so that he could just focus on himself and what he needed to do to be a better pitcher. And um, it was pretty apparent in early September that having Brody 
go through the fall like the rest of the pitchers where you know we play some games and we're competing and people come to watch and scouts are coming to watch that um, as long as there were people there and it was another team, Brody wasn't going to change or get better at the things he needed to. He was just going to go back to what he knew and how to compete. And if that makes sense. So we, you know, uh, Coach McGrath and Brody decided they just shut down from that phase of baseball. And they went into a completely uh, focused on Brody changing his movement patterns, getting into great shape, getting into great baseball <clears throat> shape, uh, focusing on all of his pitches, developing a pitch, um, location, cleaner delivery, moving more efficient. Uh, and and they went to work, and man, uh, by Christmas, you were looking at a completely completely different guy. It was exactly, from a baseball standpoint, what Brody needed. Sam Peterson uh, might be the Brody Brecht of your of your uh, hitting uh, core. Uh, Sam is off to a great start, as as we all knew he would be. All Big Ten uh, preseason, All Big Ten. He Brody, and and of course Marcus. But uh, other names that you've already mentioned, I mean, uh, Raider Tello, uh, uh, Blake Garrier, uh, Kyle Huxdorf, uh, Andy Nelson. Uh, you got a lot of guys creating traffic on the base paths, but obviously Sam's right at the front of that hitting attack. Yeah, I mean, Sam, Sam's a great player. Um, he is a special athlete. He, he is one of the rare um, guys who have um, tremendous power, but also elite level speed. Um, so, so Sam can, can kill you in a number of ways. You know, he can hit it out of the ballpark, um, like he did for the third time, um, yesterday, you know, into the wind, destroyed a ball 108 miles an hour off the bat, a uh, beautiful swing. And then, you know, he's also the guy that can steal second and third with a good catcher. I mean, he, he can really run. Um, Sam is a, is a very good, uh, defender in the outfield and on, 90% of the teams in America would be the center fielder, but because we have Kyle Huxdorf out there, who I would tell you is, you know, one of the top 10 center fielders maybe in the country in division one baseball. Um, you know, it's, it's a, a great thing for our team to have two quality outfielders that could play center field. It brings you back to the days when we, we had Joel Booker and, uh, you know, Justin tool and, uh, Eric tool and, uh, Chris Goodman, when we were putting, you know, speed on speed out there. And, and, and then we've got Ben Wilmus on the, on the other corner right now, who's a, who's a solid runner as well. So anyway, um, Sam, Sam has really developed and evolved, uh, was an infielder coming in, moved to the outfield, um, had a, had a solid freshman year where he started the second half. Uh, and then, um, you know, last year he, he had a great sophomore year, um, broke a, broke a bone in his hand stealing the base and, and had to have a pin put in it and was back in less than 12 days and, and played strong force the rest of the way. You don't see that very often. And the other thing, he's a winner. Uh, his, his summer league team, his freshman year won the, the championship. And then he went to the, the Cape Cod league last year. His team won the championship in the Cape Cod league. Uh, and and Sam has turned himself into uh, one of the premier players, not only in the Big Ten but in the country, and I think will be a, a high draft pick with a, a bright future and and potential to play in the big leagues for quite a while. It's wonderful that the Hawks are going to be playing a three-game series uh, come uh, May 16, 17, and 18 against Florida International at Principal Park, the home of the uh, the AAA uh, Iowa Cubs. Uh, and uh, more information on that is is coming up. But for our uh, many, many Hawkeye fans in the Des Moines metro area and central Iowa, including uh, uh, Sam's uh, home area, Ballard Huxley, uh, uh, talk about that series, how it came together. I mean, it's a wonderful, uh, a wonderful feather in the Hawkeye's cap. Sam Burnaby, the general manager of the, the I-Cubs and alumni, uh, great friend to Iowa baseball long before I got here, um, you know, with Jack and Brogy and and Dwayne, um, Sam and I just kind of said, "Hey, you know, this could be a big deal." Um, I hate to give up home games, obviously, because we sure. have a great, great tradition here. Uh, we're a turf team, and that's a grass field, and you know all those things. But it was a bye week, um, the last week of the 
Big Ten season for us, which is <laughs> it's the, it's, it, you hate to get the bye week the last week, but we were able to to work an agreement with Florida International to come up here and play. Uh, and I thought, well, you know, with um, Brody and Sam and, and, you know, Cade Moss and just go down Ben Wilmus and all the Des Moines area kids that we have on this team, um, that could be a pretty fun weekend. And, and you know, they seat 11,000 or so over there. And, and I believe that we can sell that place out uh, at least a couple of the, the days that we're there, um, you know, with Brody being healthy, hopefully, and still – still on the mound on uh, game one and um, and it would be and then the next week if we go to uh, you know if we if we qualify we go to the Big Ten tournament in Omaha it would be a great trial run for the Big Ten tournament in a similar setting sure um, you know play on grass you know get a week on grass before we head over to Omaha and then you know if if you play well enough and and you get in the regional um it's another opportunity like this past weekend was to put your guys in uh, a regional type atmosphere uh, heading into postseason, and, you know, the opportunity to, to, you know, have a big crowd, all those things I just said, and then hopefully potentially make some money uh, for the program. And, um, you know, it, it, it made sense. And so Sam and I, uh, and Matt Henderson, my associate athletic director and, and Beth Getz, we all we all agreed that it would be a, a great event, um, something that everyone can can rally around, and we can market and make it a, a fun three days to in the regular season. The Big Ten schedule finds the Hawkeyes opening at Purdue March 22nd. Minnesota will open the home schedule at Banksfield with a three-game set March 29th. Call 1-800-IA-HAWKS for tickets. That's this week's Fight for Iowa podcast. Thanks for listening. I'm Gary Dolphin. Go Hawks. You've been listening to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Hawkeye fans, remember to hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. Once you become a Fight for Iowa podcast subscriber, you'll automatically receive the latest episodes of the Fight for Iowa podcast, the Hawkeye Women Rise podcast, Hawk Talk replays, exclusive game content, and more. Until next time, on Iowa and go Hawks! The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.